They're big old. This is a big fold of the lung. There's another one here. In between is the heart. This heart is in a sac called pericardium and has fluid in there so that can move back and forth smoothly. When the heart beats, it has to move. If that was dry, it couldn't function. So it has to move. And the heart beats the pongus amount. In television, you recently see an ad that talks about the heart pumping 2,000 gallons of blood a day. I don't know if this room would be big enough to hold 2,000 gallons. That's a lot of space. I'm going to take off my pericardium and now we can see the heart. <laughs> Sitting in between the lungs. But you see, one of the biggest functions here is the heart pumps the blood through the lungs. It flows through the lungs gets oxygen back in it, comes back to the heart, and then it's pumped to the rest of the body. Now, i got a question for you. If it's pumped to the rest of the body, wouldn't it have made more sense to put the heart here in the middle? Why is it put up here? Now, you and I didn't put it there, but there's a reason why it's not here. Because that's like the area where all the yeah, but couldn't you put the stomach up here and the heart back here? Yeah, the protection of the ribs. That's one thing. I suppose yeah, if you're going to move the heart back, you could have moved the ribs back and then had no ribs here and none back here. It'd be kind of hard to support that. Other reasons. Yeah, get more blood to the brain. That's where you get the greatest need. Now this deer doesn't need that anymore. That brain is gone. But that's why our heart is closer to our brain than it is to our feet. You can get cold feet and you may be uncomfortable, but you don't die from it. And you get a cold brain Schools out. <laughs> so, as we look at a heart, you can see this dark streak through here. That's a, one of the arteries that pumps blood to the muscle. Heart is a muscle. This is a pump. It squeezes, it squeezes. You ever get in the swimming pool and you squeeze your hands like that and you can make water squirt? Well, that's what this does with the blood. The blood comes into the heart, is pumped to the lungs, gets oxygenated, goes back to the heart in the bigger compartment here, and then it's pumped to the rest of the body. This part of the heart, the right side, is, is in our body, doesn't have to pump the blood so far, so it isn't necessarily so big. But when you hear about people with uh, blocked arteries, having bypass surgery. These are the arteries that have to be replaced. You get a clot right in the middle, or not a clot, but a clump of that cholesterol material which will build up there, and it just plugs the thing. It's like us, any pipe can get plugged up. And this gets plugged up. Now, when you have bypass surgery, they end up and take a vein out of your leg and take part of that vein and we'll cut this and they bypass that plug. They don't take out the plug, they bypass it. That's where it gets its name. So you take a piece of the vein and maybe it's as long as your finger. Out of here or half that or whatever the case may be. And cut this so the two ends of those arteries, that artery to this vein, go around it and then cut this on this side and sew it up again. So they have hooked a pipe going around the plug. That's what it amounts to. This past summer, I had that done. Uh, it was a big surprise. 
but uh, my heart was skipping. And it would beat, beat, beat. Start beating, beat. And it might beat, skip, beat, skip, beat, skip, 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 beat, you know. that. It might do that for two, three hours, sometimes for all day. Yet some days it would run just fine. And I, it got to where I could feel that a little bit. And so doctors started giving me all kinds of tests to try to find out what's bad in your heart. All the tests showed there's something wrong, but they didn't know what. And finally the doctor says we have to do this catheterization. They go in. Uh, in your groin and cut a hole there so they can go in, in a vein and run a wire, go all the way up through the vein and up into the heart. And they're around the outside, but in this pericardium. That uh, you probably have seen television where you can see that thing going through there. And they got up in here and they found that uh, this, this is one of the valves on the outside right in here on top of the heart one of the atrium valves and this thing was flopping incorrectly it closed open doesn't wasn't doing what it was supposed to and it got things mixed up and sent the signal to the heart to beat incorrectly the heart creates its own electricity and it is functioning by electrical current Electrical current is sent to this muscle, and it'll cause that muscle to jerk, squeeze. Or if it's sent to this muscle, it'll cause this one to squeeze, and that's what makes your heart beat, is that electrical current. Now, it's not enough to run a light bulb or anything, but it still is electrical current created in your heart. And this, in my case, this was flapping wrong, and it was sending the current over here when it should have been here. So the doctor said, well, we can fix that. We'll just cut off part of that thing. It isn't necessary. So they cut off part of this. I suppose it's just like taking a sliver off of there. But while they were there looking around, they found three arteries on the outside of my heart that were 90% blocked. Now that's almost total. What that meant was, you're due for a heart attack any minute. And sometimes you survive those things and sometimes you don't. But the doctor says to me, he said, this is serious and you need to hand, do the, take care of this with surgery right away. And I said, fine, how about tomorrow? He said, no, 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 I can't do that tomorrow. I said, that, that's a complicated operation, it takes a while to get it all set and so forth. So I was done four days later. But they fixed those three arteries, and this thing in it has worked fine since. Uh, the only problem is, I don't exactly know why, but if I walk upstairs, uh, at the top of the stairs, you're puffing like you get through running a race or something. And I just, if I'm just standing here, it doesn't bother me at all. But if you and I were to race down the hall, we, uh, we'd get less than a, this room away, and you'd be going faster than I am.